For this video, I'm going to show how to make some fast flames in CorelDRAW. A lot of flames you can find, um, you know, online and clip art and that sort of thing. But it's nice to be able to make your own custom flames. Um, in this case, we'll start with a logo. Um, you can just take a look at this logo here. It's a typical kind of soccer sort of thing. I made this kind of quick. Um, this is a standard, you know, kind of boxy font here, and I just kind of modified it, cut a cut a line through it, just lined it all up. Um, this soccer ball is actually made. Um, out of pieces as a power clip into this circular shape. So you can see these are, you know, all individual shapes from polygons. Kind of made, just laid that out quick. This is, uh, um, I'll put the wireframe mode here so you can see it's the original typeface, and I knocked out that uh, that stencil cut in the top here. Go back to enhance mode. Let's go ahead and work through how to make some fast flames. What we're going to do, we start with kind of an oval here, especially if you want to do longer flames, you know, kind of like more like flames you'd see on the side of an old roadster car. Um, it's nice to just, you first are just going to kind of make a basic flame shape. And a great way to do this is to use your tools, use the freehand tool. We're using Corel 6 here, um, but the same thing will work in lower versions of Corel um, and even in the higher version up to 7. And you just make a quick click here, and then you're going to start with a one in the middle. And then we'll just go ahead and go nice and long here, one here. And you're basically going to make like a tuning fork shape here. You just go straight here. And I'm just double clicking so I can continue on to use my um, freehand. And I go ahead and close the shape. I'm going to drag these nodes out. Um, and now I'm going to double click on the shape tool. And that selects all the nodes. And then you hit the um, turn, make the nodes uh, all into curves. And the advantage to that is, as you can see, um, all these pieces now can be warped as curves. See, I can bend them as curves. I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo that because what I want to do is I want to make these two nodes here. So I'm gonna make a node here and a node here. And this is one of the tricks. You make a node on either side, and then you hit the delete key and see how it kind of averages it. And the reason I use this oval, as you'll see, is uh, I can use that as a map to kind of create my, start to create my flames. Now I'm gonna kind of curve this one, kind of curve this one down. You can already see, you know, we're starting to kind of uh, make those tongues of the flame here, kind of arcing it down, moving this over, and I want to map it on that onto that oval because I want that oval shape on the outside of it, right? It doesn't have to be symmetrical. That's the other other nice thing is it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. But if you start with a curved shape and you kind of mirror that, um, it's a little easier when you get inside here. And these pieces, you don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to make it a little bigger uh, hole here be a lot bigger. I'm going to kind of make this shape here. But one thing, here's a little trick as well. Um, instead of trying to make it exact and perfect here, one quick way to kind of help yourself, I'm going to duplicate this shape. I'm going to come back down here. And I'm going to use this to trim out um, an oval here. And you're going to kind of see how that's going to help speed things up here. Again, I'm going to hit trim. And I'll delete, and you say, oh, that's a little clunky, but see, that's the beauty of using these node tricks, is I can go here, I can double click here and there, and then get rid of any nodes in between. I don't want to delete that one. So I hit delete, and then I do the same thing here. Click here, I'm just going to get rid of this clunky node there. So that smooths it out already, and I'm already kind of getting my flame where I want it here. And again, I don't, it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, and if I feel like this is awkward here, maybe I'll you know, make one here and delete this one. Let's see if that'll average it a little more. Um, you know, if this is side the, the flame is too thin, you know, you can always kind of move things down a little bit more, um, kind of average it. And you can always kind of tweak that later. Um, this piece at the bottom, maybe I want that to angle a little bit more. So I just kind of you know, move that down and then angle it this way. And once I get one piece of the flame, now you're going to see how this works. Um, this is how one of the ways to help make it fast. You want to have a little weight to it. So what I mean by that is when the tongue of the flame gets to this part, there's, if there's more drama, it creates a, kind of a better um, effect. So what that is, I drag the shape a little bit more and just kind of create a little more drama here. You see a little bit thicker and thinner spots of the flame. So it gets a little thicker here and then a lot thinner there. And one of these, might you might want that to be a lot shorter than the top one. And so once that's done, I'm going to grab this top line. Once that's done, you can kind of take this flame piece and then you can build off of it. And what I do by that is I drag it, right click on it. And then you can see, and then I'll just kind of flip it here so that this curved piece is my flame that's going to go right here. And I'm going to kind of map that this way. And then I'm going to use this piece, right click, flip it this way. 
and then I right click here um, and I just angle it up a little bit. I'm going to use that piece up here. Maybe I'll shrink it on this part, you know, because you can always kind of come down. Um, you know, I even make it a little bit more of an effect here. You can kind of see it's going to kind of merge there. Um, and let's see how that's looking now. And what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll just put them here. I'll take these and I'll merge them. Hit the weld key. You can see I'm kind of building it there. Um, already starting to get it kind of looking like flames a little bit here. Um, and you can, you know, you kind of rapidly build it um, from this sort of a, a position here. Uh, sometimes you can stretch them longer, you know, if you want them to be stretched out more. Um, they're actually pretty versatile as long as the nodes in the flame itself are minimal. And so that's one of the most important parts is you don't want a lot of extra nodes here um, because it will make your curves really not friendly if you stretch them out. They'll tend to distort or look really strange. Um, and that can be a little bit troublesome here. And this one feels a little bit too big, so we just drop it down. As long as it's overlapping enough, um, it'll make a nice flame on this side. And we'll click over here and kind of make one over on this side. So we're kind of angling in, you know, to finish up here. Um, and then we can make one last final one, um, probably up down on the bottom here, somewhere around here. Uh, let's pop it up there. This one, kind of right about here. There we go. And I'll shrink it again on the top. There. Let's merge them all. And you don't have to worry if it's not if it's not totally perfect. See if you see little clunky spots, you don't have to worry about that. If I'm happy with my pieces here, I can delete this. And then I kind of come back here. You can see if there's clunky spots again, you know, that's where you kind of come in with your node tool. I always just click make an extra one and just kind of delete the ones in the middle. It'll smooth it right out. Um, you know, it's a useful way of, you know, when you're when you're merging these together, if you see spots that are, you know, not not smooth, just just average them real quick. Looks like we did all right here. And that's also a real helpful thing without having a lot of um, you know, extra nodes to play with. And then here, I'm just going to add a piece here to just kind of finish this off like this. And you'll see here, I'll just kind of match this up, merge it, and then we have our flame kind of working for us here. And we'll bring it to our here. And I kind of like the flames to be top heavy, so I'll have them this way, so there's more flames on the top maybe a little bit. Um, we can also angle the flames as well. Maybe it'll make it look a little bit faster. So I think if we angle it a little bit, you know, some soccer people get mad if you uh, actually distort the soccer ball. So i actually going to bump that to the front. Um, let me put all these pieces on the same layer, make sure they're here. Uh, group them, ungroup them, and then this piece can actually go down. And make sure this is filled with white. Okay, and then my flame can be filled with red. And then, of course, you know it's always a good idea to put a gradient in your flame, right? So we can just finish it off here. We'll make a custom gradient just because it's more fun uh, to kind of have it glowing a little bit, right? Um, make it custom here. Uh, a little yellow, a little white at the end. You know, add a little bit of white here. Um, let's reverse it. Uh, we'll go 180. There we go. There. Um, so you can kind of get the feel for that. You know, starting to work on this. And then one always nice thing to do here, if we hit Control D, is to actually bring this in now one more time and then knock it out white. That's a real common thing that people will do to uh, create some fast, you know, kind of double flame effect. Um, secondary to these two would be, uh, you know, to actually border this. Sometimes I'll, I'll control D and then I'll drop it down one and I will, uh, you know, drag it out just a little bit so I get a little bit of a red border here. Um, and then you can, you know, kind of moderate that. If it's, if it's too bold, you can just put a little orange on it. Um, you can also create highlights with them. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, some people put 
you know, like outlines on them. Again, depending on what your background is, you know, assuming if you're going on a, on like a gray t-shirt or something, you know, put up the back, you can see what'll stand out versus what won't. Um, one other nice little trick here that you can use for flames, I'll show this real fast here, try to fit it in to this video, is uh, double click this, I need a little more color depth to my black here. I'm going to say 90, uh, I'll go negative 90 here um, on this demon's sign. Let's go use our power. Um, this is a real nice tool that uh, some of the advanced version of Corral have that really control the distance of your uh, of your fountain fill. This is the um, interactive fill tool right here. You can kind of pop things in here and what you can see what you can do with this because I'm going to right click and then I'm going to use this flame right here. I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit here. I'm going to drag this flame down so it's like this and then I'm going to just drag it this way. And you can see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just going to get this flame kind of working inside of here a little bit. And then I right click and I just try to match it up with that one. Um, there a little bit. Maybe I can match it up on the side so they're not fighting each other too much um, there. And then we just duplicate those. Whoops, undo. If you mess up, you can always undo, as we always do, right? When in doubt, undo. And then I redo it here, a little higher, and then a little lower. And then a little higher again, a little lower. You kind of see where this is going here. And then we take all those pieces right there, group them, and then we can just um, effects, power clip, and place inside the frame here. And just go here. Oh, it's not saying it's saying it doesn't like it. Let me click here. Let me see what the deal is. Oh, that's because it's a group. Let me ungroup it. So, so if you try to place inside a group, it may not like it. So you are forewarned. You gotta regroup it. And again, sometimes it takes a little bit to uh, figure out why things aren't working for you. You ungroup it. I had grouped, accidentally grabbed the what I wanted to use as my frame. Effects, power clip, but it's actually good sometimes. That's why I don't edit these videos to leave stuff in that's an accident because you never know. Uh, and I double click here, and this this can be where hey, if it's if it's working, you can leave it. Maybe you need to crush it up a little bit, or you need to you know angle it a little bit more. Um, but it gives you an idea of how you can really kind of have fun with power clips and flames at the same time. Um, Sometimes these uh, types of things, you know, they need to be they need to be a lot smaller, or they need to be, you know, you can always really quickly edit um, your designs, you know, as you can see here, to uh, give you some really fun effects uh, using the same basic principles and from the same basic uh, flame that you started with, um, and then show it to your show it to your client and just see what they say.